Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to The Runner. If you are new here, hit subscribe to join the channel as tomorrow morning we have the London Marathon 2024. I'll be covering that race here on this channel, so click subscribe and make sure you click that grey notification bell next to the subscribe button. In today's video, we're going to be covering three main news topics. Number one, Kipchoge traveling to Paris. Number two, Bekele's press conference for the London Marathon. And number three, Jeffrey Kambora has made a massive announcement regarding the London Marathon. Stay tuned to stay up to date with all of these big three things. Firstly, let's start with Elid Kipchoge. Why is he in Paris? Well, it turns out he's become another bit of a model. So, those of you who've been following Kipchoge's Instagram will know that he did a bit of a funny photo shoot uh, around, I think it was last year, around summer, where he was wearing really weird clothing. Well, now he is doing photo shoots in Paris for the new Kenya Olympic kit. So what do you guys think? Let's take a little, little look at this. Comment down below your opinions. Do you think this is a good kit? One thing I just wanted to criticize about these photos and this photo shoot is why on earth have they got awful lighting? I thought they're supposed to show you the kits, not like keep them all in the dark so you can't even see what color or pattern. First off, it's very interesting. It looks like a unique design. I don't think I like the font that they've used to write the word Kenya. I think it looks like a bit, you know, someone used word art or kind of used their crayon pencil in nursery to draw it on. Now, that's just my constructive criticism. Obviously, there's some even really, really diabolical outfits from other countries. Trust me, don't even get me started on some of the European countries. These designers, I have no idea where on earth they're getting them from. Uh, I have to say that, after all, guys, it's not about the vest they're wearing. It's about the athlete they are. We need to remember that. These are true warriors that are achieving phenomenal things. Now, when I did research on this photo shoot and Eli Kipchoge's fans and Kenyan Athletics followers and their reaction, turns out they're not too happy about this design. They don't like it. Now, they've had this kind of a honeycomb kind of interesting design in recent years as well. And I like this one. I think this is nice. This jacket they've got here. I think it's a good design. I like the pattern. They've got the Kenyan flag, the Nike tick on the right. I like that. However, I don't like the new vest. So that's just my opinion. I want to hear what you guys have to say about that because, you know, running vests can be controversial. Sometimes the companies get uh, short on ideas for how to change the design. Because don't, don't forget, guys, they can't copy designs from the past. They have to always make something new. So when it comes to a Olympic vest, you're probably thinking, God, why do they add all these weird patterns? Or why is it that color when it used to be this? Sometimes they even change the color, which I thought wasn't allowed, but some countries I've seen actually change their color almost completely, which confused me because I remember watching the Olympics back in 2016, Rio, and some of the countries had changed the color of their, um, of their singlet. I can't remember if it was Team USA or if it was Canada, but they changed to a totally different color, which just confused the hell out of me. Eli Kipchoge probably isn't allowed to give his opinion on these vests. It's very controversial. Athletes just really have to keep their mouth shut when they're sponsored by these companies. That's why I never get sponsored or have any contracts because I like to speak my mind and give my full honest opinions. You won't find that with any other running channel on YouTube, especially one that's posting as often as I am. So one last look at the running vest before we move on to the next segment of today's video which is the running news regarding Bekele arriving at London so okay not too bad you know it's very weird color I don't know if it's the lighting um Ellie Kipchoge's quads looking absolutely ripped this guy is an animal he's phenomenal he is the god of the marathon I cannot wait to see him at Paris I'm so excited definitely subscribe as well if you want to watch him at Paris if you aren't subscribed already you shouldn't even be watching this video because you're wasting your time. London Marathon tomorrow and Paris Marathon in July. Number two, here we have Bekele arriving for the London Marathon press conferences and the interviews. Pre-race interviews and photo shoots can be very stressful 
as hundreds and sometimes even thousands of media outlets from corporations to independent journalists want to take photos of Bekele. They want to do interviews with him and it can get very tiresome and stressful. I know that some guys go into these press conference rooms with their cameras, they get press passes and they try and interview Bekele for up to 20 minutes. This is why sometimes you may see videos or TV recordings of athletes actually being rude to people, asking for signatures or asking them questions. They may just ignore them and walk past. I've seen this with even the most kindest of celebrities and the most nicest of athletes. It's because they simply can't answer everyone. They can't do signatures for millions. They can't do interviews for half an hour for 28,000 people. It just doesn't work. So it gets to a point where they have to just ignore people and walk out the building. Obviously the priorities are the big news corporations like the BBC, uh, The Sun, The Guardian, The Independent. You've got the American news broadcasters, the big European ones. He will have to prioritize the interviews with them over say an independent journalist or a smaller news company. This is something that Bekele has always had to do at the London Marathon and it definitely takes a lot of energy from him and probably makes him extremely tired. I can imagine that he probably arrived in London around a week ago, allowing him to acclimatize to the sea level, which is really, really beneficial for Kenyan and Ethiopian runners because they are used to running so high at altitude that when they travel to sea level, their breathing becomes more relaxed, it becomes easier, and when they take a breath in, it is more oxygen rich and it isn't so thin. This is very, very crucial when adapting and acclimatizing. The same applies to Europeans or English people who go from sea level to high altitude. They must acclimatize. You can't just turn up one day before and run a whole marathon in a completely different climate with different air, sun, pollution, uh, precipitation, humidity. They are entirely different microclimates. It's very important to keep this in mind as it can literally make or break their race. During these days of interviews and press conferences, Bekele will be doing shakeout runs, he will be doing stretching and a lot of strides. If you watch my video about Bekele and his training, you'll know that he loves strides. He does something silly like 30 100 meter strides at the end of his easy runs. If you don't believe me, go and look at that. It was, I believe it was, don't quote me on this, but I think it was the company um, Sweat Elite that mentioned he does something stupid like 20 strides at the end of every run which is is crazy and when i say every run i mean like his days off from his session so like his morning run and his afternoon run and he usually does between i think it was either 80 meters or even the full 100 meter strides so bekele is a big advocate of strides he absolutely loves doing them as for food i've also covered that a lot of the athletes like to take their own food in dry sachets because they don't want to get upset stomachs now, the only race Bekele has done this year in 2024 was the New York City Half Marathon where he ran a very disappointing time of just under 64 minutes, which would give him a 207 marathon, which is, is bad. It's not going to get him even the top 20, I don't think, or the top 15 tomorrow morning. However, in the interview after that race, he said that he ate some food and it made him feel like he had a bad stomach or a stomach ache. Now this could be down to a specific food he's eaten in New York from a hotel or a street food vendor or a donut place because New York is known for really good food, Italian food, pizzas, pastas, you know, these things are junk food and they have a lot of oil and fat and some of these foods may be irritating Bekele's gut if he is trying them for the first time right before a big race. So when I watched him in that interview, I knew something wasn't right. He didn't seem right. He seemed like he was in pain. He was also upset about how bad the race went because he went out in the lead looking like he was going to run sub one hour easily. And then he just dropped back miles after the first 5k, which I couldn't believe. So during this London Marathon, he needs to be very careful the food he eats. He must keep it clean, basic, whole foods, no curries or uh, Mexican spicy food or any type of food that he's never had before that contains a lot of herbs or spices as these are known to irritate your gut but they can also heal you so 
and healing foods also cause die off and weird cleansing reactions in your body which you don't want to go through just before a big race because he don't want to end up being in a marathon race and then needing to use a toilet at the 5k mark that would destroy his entire race so in this year's london marathon bekele and his running agents may have taken pre-prepared food after what happened at the new york city half marathon so that's just really one important thing to note about his week leading up to tomorrow's race so next we're going to be going on to the big news which is the highlight of today's video regarding jeffrey kanwara some of you may have heard about this news it is extremely disappointing and saddening but i just can't understand why this has happened now before i get onto what that news is i just want to say that this is going to change the london marathon profoundly tomorrow it's going to make it completely different and it's going to mean that it will not be the same having said that i think that bekele is definitely scared of jeffrey kamwara he knows he is a potential threat when it comes to winning the london marathon so he was definitely extremely worried knowing oh no you know he's trained with kipchoge he's one of his best friends could he possibly beat me if he's in good shape and kamwara placed fourth at the recent kenyan cross-country championships which was very very good so we're on to the third part of today's video which is arguably the most important Kamora has made a big update on his situation regarding the london marathon 2024 i can't believe this it's only been around he he announced this news around 48 hours before the race so i believe it was either yesterday on friday or it may have been on thursday but jeffrey Kamora has gone announced that he hasn't got on the plane to london on wednesday or thursday to acclimatize and do his shakeout runs and his reason for this is because he has a niggling injury now i'm going to read out an article that i found on google stating some more information about this i was so disappointed to hear that camera won't be in the race tomorrow i just can't believe it so let's read through this posted by the london marathon on their website the Kenyan who finished second last year has been suffering from irritation of his hip flexor and has not flown to London for Sunday's race. The two champions from yesterday's Boston Marathon wheelchair race will be heading to London looking to make it two. So this is some more information I think. I don't need to read any of that but yeah I mean they only gave him one sentence. I would have liked more information ideally but um, yeah so that's all we've been told guys. Look. He has been suffering from irritation of his hip flexor and has not flown to London. What on earth is going on? Oh, I have so much criticism for this statement. I have no idea. If you have an injury, surely you're going to announce this weeks before the race. Why would he leave it this late to announce uh, 48 to 72 hours before the race start? It doesn't make any sense to me. When things like this happen, it makes me question, has he been told not to race or has he been put off racing and is is this just some kind of a excuse i don't know guys it's very worrying in the next part of this video i want to go over my points as to why i think something's not right here i don't know why camora would announce this so late because even if he's trying to play in the minds of the other uh, runners and like make them think oh no he is going to be racing it doesn't make any sense because Camora's fans could have traveled to that race they may have booked hotel tickets and now he's given them really late notice that he's not going to be there because he didn't get on the plane on Wednesday or Thursday in order to get to London that's so disappointing and I understand that injuries can actually be short term they can be unannounced and they can arise quickly so I fully understand that maybe he has uh, recently got the irritation come back maybe on tuesday or wednesday so that is a possibility but it said that he's had this for a while the sources that i found said that he's had the irritation for a long time so here are my points camera drops out my issue with this news why would he leave it this late to drop out this whole situation reminds me of bekele dropping out of london back in 2020 in brackets he came to london three days before the race in 2020 did his shakeout runs and even did the press conference interviews but then 24 hours after the race he decides to fly home lol like 
Yeah, and it turns out he also had a niggling injury. It, I feel like the taper destroys these athletes. It's like they go from running 120, 140 miles a week to dropping it to like 70 or 80 miles per week. And their body's like, oh, yay, nice, lots of rest. Let's just get an injury. Let's just flare up for no reason. Very, very annoying when this happens because I was, that was my second favorite athlete that I was looking forward to watching in tomorrow's race. It was going to be Bekele number one and then Kamwara number two and then mm, Mosinek Geremu and Tamarat Tola were equal. They were tied at three. I'm, I'm excited to see both of them equally. So uh, it's so annoying, guys. I can't believe this happened. I'm really disappointed. If anyone has any more news regarding this issue, please comment down below because sometimes it's difficult to find news about these athletes as they don't stay up to date with their fans, I don't think. They don't post enough, they're not active on social media, especially Bekele, and I get disappointed when things like this happen and we only hear about it from the official London Marathon and they do one tiny sentence. <sighs> it, it, I wish maybe a Kenyan news outlet has interviewed him regarding this or something, but I think right now that Jeffrey Kamora will be very disappointed, he'll be very upset and angry because he's trained very hard for the past six to eight months for this race. He's ran the Kenyan cross country champs where he ran a very fast 10k over cross country at altitude and placed fourth in his country championships. That right there tells me that he has plenty of fitness to at least run a 205 if not a 204 marathon. You know this guy definitely has potential in future to run very fast but he's just had so many injuries. Uh, he was gonna have a breakthrough back in 2017 and 2019 when he was really challenging Mo Farah on the track but I think what went wrong with Jeffrey is when he stopped being a 5 and 10k runner on the track he went to the marathons and from that point he basically ran too many miles. I reckon what happened with Kamora this is my theory as to why he got too many injuries and ruined his career is because he probably went from like 80 or 90 miles a week to trying to run the same as Kipchoge, like 150 or just under, like 130 maybe. And what this has done is caused major inflammation and irritation in his hip flexors. The hip flexors are vital. If you have tight hip flexors or you have tendonitis or inflammation in them, you're screwed. There's no way you can run a marathon at 440 mile pace. Every single step will be excruciating pain as arguably the hip is one of the most important parts of the body to hold your body up while you're running. So the hip flexor, if you imagine it like an elastic band, sometimes it can tear. It can also inflame if it's overstretched or overused. And at times it can become swollen, the areas around it, or there can be water retention in between the hip bones and the actual tendon. This isn't good and it's understandable if this is the real reason why he's dropped out then it makes sense. These are the three pillars of today's video. This was a video to inform you guys on the latest news in the running world. You won't find this type of news anywhere else on YouTube. I am the only running channel on YouTube that covers all of the latest news and that covers all of the latest big marathon races. One other thing I wanted to quickly add is my predictions for tomorrow. I will be waking up bright and early for this race. Make sure you tune into my channel around midday where I will have the race reaction uploaded on my channel here. One thing I did say is that I thought that perhaps Kamura would win this race. Well, obviously that's impossible now as he's not in London. He's still in Kenya with his family. He's probably recovering from his injury, doing some massage or some easy shakeout runs. Right now I'd have to change my predictions and I think that Mosinet Garimu is going to win in a time of 2.01. Uh, yeah, I just said it. I reckon he's going to run 2.01. I don't think he'll run a world record. Mosinet Garimu hasn't raced a marathon in a very long time. He, his uh, IAAF records look very questionable in terms of he just hasn't raced in a long time. So he could be hiding something massive right now. He could have trained for the past two years just for this race. He might go out at world record pace. He may discuss with the pacers in the, you know, race preparations. That's also something else they'll all be doing as well as press conference is they will be having the elite preparations where they meet with the organizers who discuss the 
pacing splits that will be given to the pacers and they will be told to run at that pace. Obviously, if they're given something silly, they won't last very long. They'll only make it till around 20k or 25k if they're told to go sub one hour for the first half. But it's exciting times, guys. I cannot wait. Fingers crossed. Come on, Bekele. Let's go. Drop a like for good luck for Bekele. Subscribe to my channel and I'll catch you all tomorrow at midday. Do not forget to check into my channel. Good luck to everyone running. I hope you do well.